this is the machine from All Ozone. Now folks, All Ozone, you may have heard of, uh, they're a company that is certified by the NOAI, which is uh, the National Ozone Association. It's actually an ozone association that I created and was stolen from me a couple of years ago. This uh, company is really uh, run by a man named Mark Tipton, and I've been uh, waiting and, and biding my time before shooting this video, but they're just such blatant, um, poor replica machines that I've had a lot of their customers that uh, have requested that I shoot this video and show people the real truth and expose the inside of the all ozone generator. So we ordered an all ozone generator from Mark Tipton, and uh, we got this packet right here. Uh, this is some uh, instructions, instructions for the use of your ozone generator. And uh, it talks about uh, a bunch of things. It says ozone dissipates in about 20 or 30 minutes. That's not exactly true. The half-life of ozone is 20 minutes. So it takes two hours to really uh, break down a decent uh, amount of ozone. And uh, it does say allozone.com right here, has a phone number. And um, on our third page, it has the all ozone warranty. And uh, it says, uh, we do not refund for ozone machines. Abuse by those seeking to use the units and sending them back for a refund makes refunds unmanageable. So, this is the all ozone machine. They don't uh, refund, they don't uh, warranty their machines, and that's kind of obvious why when you take a look inside of it. So the all ozone machine, uh, they advertise on the website with uh, this timer built into it. We ordered this timer, it cost $8, and uh, it's very difficult to get to work, um, even when it's wired correctly. So in this model, you can see it, it does not have that. They've changed it to a switch and a fuse. And if you look inside, we've got a very basic, bare-bones, garage-built ozone generator, which is kind of funny because I've heard that they tell customers that we make our machines in our garage. And while it's true I invented my first ozone machine in my garage six years ago, we have a 7,000 square foot facility in Grafton, Ohio. But what they've got in here are a couple of very hokey, inexpensive $10 air duct inline fans. These are for boosting uh, airflow inside a furnace duct system. They've got three naked mounted transformers and a little bit of hot glue and one screw holds these six inch to four inch reducer couplings. So they're actually restricting the airflow by reducing this fitting right here from six to four inches to get it out of the box. They have a pretty uh, junky Chinese switch, and when you turn it on, it begins to make it. Now they claim this has two 250 CFM fans. I'm not sure the rating on these inline duct fans, but I can tell you folks that when you add two fans together in line, it reduces the overall output. It doesn't, the increase of two is not the sum of them. It is actually uh, one interferes with the airflow of another and it actually restricts the airflow. So this makes the overall output less than if they just had one of the fans mounted in this machine. It is a very uh, poorly constructed machine. They haven't uh, deburred the holes where they put these PVC fittings before they insert them. They got rid of the digital timer that we mentioned and they've gone to taking a piece of advice from me which is to use a standalone exterior timer. And folks, the reason they probably switched is the same reason I never built mine into my machines, is digital timers break down in the presence of ozone gas. So the companies that sell these with all the bells and whistles um, to make it seem like they have a full featured machine really end up costing contractors. Because if your whole machine won't turn on because the digital timer has gone bad, it means you gotta put the machine back in the box ship it back to the manufacturer, have them repair it and get it back to you. And when that happens, you are out of the ozone generator, out of, your, out of service. And time is money. So when your machine's gone, it's not making you money. And as a contractor, we rely on our ozone equipment. If a machine goes down and it's not in service, it comes out of my back pocket 
And that means it comes out of your back pocket if you're a contractor relying on ozone generating equipment. Another thing that I found is very interesting when we look inside this all ozone machine, they make several claims about having the, a very safe ozone generator, the safest on the market, they say. And if you look inside here, they have cut the ground wire that comes from this orange extension cord and it just dead ends. It goes to nowhere in the box. I'll shoot a close-up photograph of that so you can see that. Um, we use a thermal fuse on every one of our ozone generators. They claim to use a thermal fuse, but when we got the machine, there's a direct soldered connection to the switch and the fuse. No thermal fuse is, is in evidence. And it uh, is about as bare bones of a bare bones machine as you can make. Some other things that we noticed, um, they have this hose fitting. But first, let me just show you how much output this guy makes. When we turn this machine on, this is the output side. It makes a very low hum. And this is the streamer that I use in all my videos. You can see it will flutter in this breeze, but it barely moves the gas out of the box. In one of their videos, Mark puts a, an ozone meter right at the end of the output of this device, and um, he shows it climbing 20 parts per million. Well, folks, if you hold a meter in front of a very low output fan like this, right in front of the generating elements, you may get to 20 parts per million at the end of the work. test an ozone generator in our ozone test chamber. We're testing the parts per million concentration in the room itself that we are measuring and then we data log that output and this machine will never create 20 parts per million in a room in seconds like that he shows in his video. It's just because he's holding that sensor in front of the output end of the ozone machine. That's a huge point. So we have a, 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 a ground wire that is terminating right inside the box. It's not connected to anything. That means this is an ungrounded machine. That makes it an electrical hazard. We've got two inline junky duct fans. And when I, to show you what I mean by an inline duct fan, here's a duct fan I purchased at Home Depot. Uses that exact same mechanism to hold it to these couplers you can see in here. I'll take this duct fan out in a second and show you how it works. We don't even use anything for grates. So if you turn this machine on, you can uh, suck a finger in. I'll put it on this so you can see. Um, there's nothing to stop someone's finger from going into the fan blades. Now, it won't even chop this paper so the doubtful would actually hurt someone's finger. But that is a very irresponsible bill, having nothing to stop your, your hands from being able to go in and hit the naked blades. So we've got what looks like a toolbox-based ozone machine like we used to build our old machines into. It still has the DeWalt toolbox sticker on it. No stickers on it to indicate that it's from all ozone, just this paperwork that we got with it in this white envelope. And when you see this duct hose that they sell with this machine, the output becomes even more apparent that it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And when we turn on this machine, here is our fan. Now, folks, there's not even a flutter. If I hold this in front, you can see it barely moves a puff of ozone out of this hose. Because that's just not enough pressure to do any volume of work. So another feature that they claim for their ozone generators is they, they have these, this tremendous ozone production, this quality construction, durable but easy to repair, stainless steel parts on a short proof transformer. Well, it is a standard um, 
transformer with uh, honeycomb plates. It's a decent transformer and plates and they're screwed into that bit of thick plastic on the bottom there. We bolt ours down. Um, these are screwed down. But, um, you know, all these uh, transformers are short proof. That means if one of the plates gets a crack in it, it will shut off and stop producing gas. So there's nothing special about their short proof safety transformers. What it's missing, again, is the thermal fuse. No thermal fuse. It is missing a ground. Uh, the ground wire just dead ends into the box and goes nowhere. It's connected to nothing. It's got a very low quality switch and fuse holder. Um, this is the cheapest fuse holder you can buy. The more expensive ones fit flush inside this mechanism. And we can buy these from China for about a dollar a piece if we wanted to. Our, our fuse holders are, are more heavy duty and they fit flush inside this thread in mechanism. But all in all, it is an ozone generator. It does make a decent amount of ozone, but it won't get it out of the box and that means it won't get into the room. And because it doesn't get into the room, it can't fill the room to high concentrations. If you want to use the hose attachment that comes with it, you're really going to be hurting. And in terms of professional look, build grade, the safest ozone generator on the market, it's all marketing hype. Marketing hype from Mark Tipton, thinly disguised veil covered by the National Ozone Association. And for a $500 ozone generator, you get what you pay for. It's something built in someone's garage that doesn't know a lot about making ozone generators with very poor build quality and virtually no safety features whatsoever. A naked fan that you can stick your fingers into, two fans together, which actually reduces the effect of the overall output. I didn't know this a long time ago when I built my first hydroxyl machines, we used two fans. And what we discovered after consulting with a, um, an HVAC engineer is that that actually reduces the overall uh, output of one fan to use two in conjunction with each other. They fight each other. And then you've got just you know, six inch couplers that reduce to four inch, so it restricts that airflow of this uh, inline six inch duct fan that's used in the production. And just to show you what I mean about, uh, you know, low quality building, it's just got a couple of screws holding this together. So we'll go ahead and we'll back out the screw. That one screw holds this whole fitting in place, not, not very durable. We've got to back out the one transformer. He says this is very easy to change these transformers, uh, but in reality, these have shrink fit seals around the, the connection, so it would be virtually impossible for a person to do without cutting these wires. Yeah. When you take this six inch plumbing coupling out, you'll see this really junky fan. from the 
machine compared to something that will barely even flutter. And if you hook up a hose attachment to it for doing a car or for doing an RV or any of the other thousands of different things Ozo can be applied for, you still have the exact same When you're talking ozone generators, you either want a professional model or a garage-built model. You either want a professional ozone generator or a garage-built ozone generator. You want mirror-polished stainless steel, high volume, or you want garage built toolbox machine. Again, another high volume ozone generator shooting that ozone gas far away from the machine. Folks, when you're talking about ozone, the machine you don't want to invest in is the garage built all ozone generator. Even if they claim to be NOA certified, NOA is just a sales organization for all ozones, garage built ozone generators.